that. This is the Saturday panel. Tomorrow, Derry Club Glen meet Kilmico Croaks of Dublin in the All-Ireland Club Football Final. Joining us over the next hour to talk all things club will be three Derry men. In a moment, we'll speak to uh, Enda Gormley, uh, former Waddy Graham's manager and uh, All-Ireland winner with Derry. And also on the line right now, Tony Scullion, 1993 All-Ireland winner with Derry and an All-Ireland club winner from 2002 with Ballon Derry, Conleth Gilligan. Conleth and Tony, how's the form? Okay, Very well, John, how are you? Great to talk to you, lads. Um, there's going to be plenty of Croaks buys, by the way, over the next 24 hours and off the ball with Mick O'Keefe on the papers tomorrow. And it's also my local club, lads, so um, the, we'll, we'll even out the uh, the conversation. But I kind of was interested in the perspective of the club scene, not only just in terms of Glen and Derry, but also the, how the club game is going at the moment. And Conleth, in 2002, you were champion with Ballon Derry. Last year, you helped Mickey Moran with Kilku. You're on the sideline with Kilku over the last 12 months as well. Why do you keep on going back, Conleth? What is, what is the juice? What is keeping you so passionate about the club? game? Ah, look, I think uh, the one thing that everybody would have is that everyone has a club, whether it's a big club or a small club, but it's just the one part of the game that it's equal for everyone. And you've seen just especially of how big last weekend's junior final was. And it just means so much to so many people. And the chance for teams to compete, whether you're in a big city club like Kilmacud or, or a more rural club like, like Van Gary, it's the one competition that everybody has a chance. What are the memories of O2, 20 years on now? Is it still vivid? Many parts of it still vivid. There's many days after it that I don't remember and I've <laughs> lost. But uh, yeah, look, it was something very special. Obviously, we played the final in Thurlis because Croke Park was closed for reconstruction. So there was a huge number of Balneary people who would have travelled there and stayed. And we had a banquet in Kilkenny that night, which was already booked. And if you had been beaten, it would have been a complete disaster. But the fact that we won and, and pretty much everybody from Boundary was there, it was it was something very, very special. And you think back to, you know, I suppose my own father saying about the final whistle, who, who's no longer with us. And them things live in the memory. And, and for, for Glenn people, for Kilmacud people, if they get over the line, it'll be those special relationships that'll endure in, in the memories. Oh, and was it a close match? I don't, I don't remember it at the time. Now, who were you playing, and what was the score? Yeah, we were we were playing Limo Rangers, yeah, and we actually we actually won it by seven points in the finish up. But it was really close up into the last couple of minutes where we we scored a goal in the point. Other than that, it was it was nip and tuck. Obviously, Colm Corkery, Stephen O'Brien would have been the the star turns at that stage. So we'd have been good in as massive underdogs. Um, but just on the day, like we had players like Endon, we'll do an Adrian McGuck and Jared Yasty, who were at the very top end of club football in Derry at that time. How has it changed in 20 years then for you, Conlet? And how's the game changed? Well, I think the game changed massively. Um, watch, you know, uh, not that long ago, I watched the game back and it was like a throwback to stuff happened way beyond that. The ball was kicked in. It was man-to-man battles all over the pitch. Tactically, it, it was just you had to be better than your man. Whereas now, if you look at the Kilmacud Glen game, Defensively, it'll be which team sets up best. It'll be kickouts is going to be massive. It used to be kickouts were kicked 50-50 and always contested. So you always had a chance. But the professionalism in the game that Glenn have at the moment, the Kilmer could have the setups that are par to anything at county level at the moment. And like video analysis, the conditioning of players, it's just off the scale and compared to we would have been. And, and that was only 20 years ago. Tony, great to talk to you. You're a ball on the screen, man. You played both football and hurling for the likes of Dunloy tomorrow, for Glen, for Kilmacud. It's just so important for the parishes and for the communities to be at the biggest day, isn't it, Tony? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's tremendous for, for those clubs. And, you know, uh, you mentioned Dunloy there. It, it, isn't it great to see an Ulster team uh, in the in the All-Ireland club final? You know, uh, possibly, you know, you, you want to see even county uh, hurling and proven here and up, up in this province but when you look at what Slat Neil uh, done a few years ago uh, how they put it up to Bally Hill uh, Shamrocks in, in Park Esler a few years ago uh, Dunloy tomorrow has the same opposition and I'm sure they'll, they're will they going to Crow Park and they'll be, they'll be going with confidence but you know they're, they're, they are the underdog Bally Hill Shamrocks is a, is a massive uh, hurling club and success they've had down the years is second to none so but I'm telling you, Dunloy will go there and they'll give it everything. And then Crow Park tomorrow, it'll be, sure, hopefully it'll be a sea of green and gold. You have Glenn and you have Dunloy there, so it should be a great, great day. Big time. And Gregory O'Kane, like he deserves a huge amount of credit for the participation and the involvement in, in Dunloy at every level for, as a player and as a manager. And after four defeats, Tony, if they did win it, it'd be it'd be such a boost for the hurling, in, both in Antrim and in the north, because Dunloy's not too far from yourselves in Derry as well. 
Sorry, sorry, I missed you there. Uh, Dunloy's not too far from yourselves in Derry, Tony, and if they did finally win it, it would be a great boost for the game of small ball in the north. Absolutely, absolutely. It would be, it'd be, it'd be tremendous. You know, I think Loch Gein is the only club yeah. from, from, from the north here that has went, went and won an All-Ireland club. So, as I say, it would be, be absolutely brilliant for, for Dunloy and, as you say yourself, Dunloy and, and, and Glenn were... were, were we're not they're not far from each other a lot of miles and it just shows you what can be done when you even look at Glen there um you know and you talk about that straight line <laughs> you can really see it it's in the same road when you look at Slat Neil what they've done in, in Hurling football and Camogie then you go down the road a few miles to Glen and they're in all Ireland club final tomorrow go down another few miles down the road and Lavi Lavi won the All Ireland in the early nineties and uh, head on down another few miles down the road and you come to Blahy and they won the All-Ireland in 1972. So uh, it's wonderful what a small parish, small community, what they can achieve when they when they really buy into things and really go for it. Yeah, I'm kind of looking through, as uh, Tony's saying there, Conneth, uh, the, the clubs in Derry and club football, Slock Neil, Balahi, Lavi, Loop, Ballerin, Dungiven, Ballanderry, Glen, they've all, all won Ulster club football titles. But it's been argued in some quarters that the rivalry is too intense and has hampered the county team. Has that been your experience? Um, would you now say in the recent years of support of Slock Neil in a Lord Arden final? Yeah, look, I, I think a lot is made of the rivalry at club level. And while it's intense, well, Tony would testify, when you're playing with Derry, you want to win with the boys around you. But like there has been times in games where it's spilled over, but I think it's a lot been made more of it from the outside. Um, Derry Club football so strong. Whenever Balahi won in All-Ireland, then Lavi won it, Ballery won it. Everybody thinks if they get out of Derry, they can win Ulster, and that has proven to be the case, and I don't think that's going to change. Um, I think, obviously, it's, Rory Gallagher has made a bit of a change in that, in that he has been able to get players harnessed with COVID, the league in Derry ha- has been non-relegation, which has meant that he has had all the players available to him. So I think there's a really good cohesion in Derry at the moment. And look, when you look at the Glen team, Connor Glass coming home from Australia has been the catalyst to a whole lot of that. Absolutely. Did you feel there was much division in Derry with all the clubs, Tony, or um, with Banlis Screen? What was it like in the 90s? You, you didn't have the best of runs. You, you, you came close on so many occasions. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're You're... You can see sussness out there. Uh, we were so close, but one we lost, and I lost in three county finals uh, in the early nineties. Uh, we were n- always knocking at the Bangla screen. We were always knocking at the door. Then, uh, you no know, Lavi beat us, and and, and they went on to win the All Ireland. Uh, Lavi beat us again, and they 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 they, they could beat in the All Ireland semi final until uh, uh, Skibber, uh, uh, Skibber, Tony Davis's club and and Don Davis's club. Is that Skibberine? Was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, and then in '94, Blahy beat us in the county final, and they got to the Ireland Club final that year, and they were beat by a Dublin team on the Ireland Club final. So, you know, we were we were knocking at the door. We never just got over the line, but uh, you no, know, as as Conlon said there, you know, it's a healthy rivalry. It's it's you no, know, you know, the clubs. Yes, you're playing for your community. You're playing for your parish. You you want you you you're gonna give it all in the day, but no, when that game's over, you shake hands and you no, know, we, we 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 don't. It doesn't it doesn't boil over in Norton usually, you know. And as I say, you know, it's good to it's good to play with that. It's good to play with that heart, and it's good, you know. And that's what makes that what that's what makes the Derry Club that comes out of the Derry Senior Championship. That that's what that makes them so hard to beat. There's one the one there's one thing, and I know Rory Gallagher. Has done great work this last couple of years, that a uh, few years that has come on to, to take the Derry senior team. But there's one thing I hope I, I would like to see the county board change. And, you know, our leagues need to be competitive for club leagues. And this last couple of years, our leagues has been non-competitive, and and that will ruin that will ruin the county team down the line. So we need to we need to make our, our, our all county league competitive game a relegation on it because as I say. Lads are, lads are not going to put up with playing 14 or 15 challenge matches through the year. They're, they're, you know, they're not going to stay about for that. So please, God, we can sort that out. Uh, Colin, the Irish Times this week has been doing a brilliant uh, almost survey or examination of the club scene. Um, they've been kind of examining diminishing population and on the opposite side in areas like Dublin where you have uh, you know a huge amount of membership now of, of certain clubs but no facilities or no even home in some cases. Um, issues like emigration, issues like uh, industries moving out of rural areas and 
people not even necessarily moving to cities, but to urban towns. And you're seeing some teams can't even field a team uh, at, at certain uh, rural club and what they're having to do at, at underage level is amalgamate certain clubs just like you've had the experience at Kilcoo uh, you now at Eden Dork uh, you obviously are a Ballon Derry uh, Shamrock's man what is the life of a, an Ulster club at the moment uh, what are the rhythms of it what are the positives what are the uh, the challenges in general, club football has never been stronger uh, in an Ulster context and whether it be Down or, or Derry or Tyrone, the like, club scene is very, very strong. But again, the points you make are very much correct. You know, there'd be a number of small rural clubs where there's no housing being built. The population has been moving to the, the big rural area. So it's going to be very, very hard. And like where we would be at in the Loch Shore here, within about a 20 mile radius, there could be 20 clubs. And like one or two of those clubs, like, like, and Derry, Ogre Column Kill will be sandwiched on the Drone Derry border. And like they currently aren't operating any underage football. And while they have a senior team going, there's nothing at underage in terms of population of a small primary school. So those are the issues. When you look at on the bigger scale for the likes of Killam Cut, obviously, a lot has been made of Shane Watch's transfer in. You know, look, he's living in Dublin, he's entitled to go where he wants. But again, it, it makes it much harder because they already have a number of teams and there does have to be something looked at there. Um Underage teams are amalgamating all over the place. So there's so many issues. And part of that as well is in terms of housing. Like I spoke to a friend in Ross Trevor recently who would have been a very famous club in Down, um, Pete McGrath's home club. And a lot of the young people in there are having to move into Newry and the surrounding areas because it's a, it's a lovely rural area set by the sea, but the housing prices is there has been 30, 40% raised on what they were five years ago, they've been told. So those are the issues, but we won't change that. People have always moved to big cities for work. They've always moved to towns, and unfortunately, that's going to be the way. But I think in terms of the club game, there's still a very strong tie of people want to play for their parish, want to play for their community. And while you're always going to get one or two situations with a Shane Walsh coming in, generally, by and large, you'd have players that would be travelling serious distances to play for their club, whether it be working and living in Belfast, or people in Dublin sort of moving back to Galway. That'll always happen. And I think the club game's in a really good position. Yeah, like he's not the first by any means. I think the fact that he scored nine goal, nine points in the All-Ireland final uh, definitely, I suppose, uh, put the spotlight on Shane Walsh. Um, Tony, what's the landscape like in Ballon Screen? I was checking back through the years. I think he won a county title in 1973 and you had you'd, you'd, you'd some close calls in the 90s. Uh, what are the positives? What are the challenges for you at the moment in your club, Tony? Well, the challenge is, you know, we are, we are a dual club. And in fact, we have all codes. We have Camogie and, and Liddy's football and we have Hurling and football for the boys. So we have all, co- we have all codes. So, you no, know, that's that's a challenge in itself. Even though we we have, you know, we have a a fairly good, uh, um, fairly sized population. We're not, you know, <laughs> we're a village. We're a village, but, you know, our parish extends and we have a decent parish size. Uh, and the numbers at the moment are pretty good. We have in the club, but as I say, when you have when you cater for all, when you cater when you have to cater for all codes, it's, you, you know we're not we're not a Kilmacud or, or the Dublin clubs that we we can put, put out to ten or twelve on the fourteen teams or whatever got like there. But you know the, the challenge for for Ballon the screen are you know we 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 want to get back up the ladder again, and thankfully this last few years we've. We've a good, we've a good on the fifteen team, and uh, we've won a couple of championships with there. So, uh, so that's 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 what, you know that's what has to start at. You know, when you look at the when you look at the the history of this, the, the success likes of Conway's club there, Ballandere, and the success they had of going on to win the All Ireland. But you know that started at down the age level. They had a later later minor team, and I think it was ninety. Conway's will say there ninety six, ninety seven that won county minor titles, two in a row. And, you know, a lot of them boys went on and they won maybe six or seven championships with, with uh, senior championships with, with that group of lads. Likewise, Glenn here now, Glenn are in the Lurden final tomorrow, they won four county titles in a row, four c- county minor titles in a row. And not alone, I think it was 2011 to 2014, not alone did they win the county minor title, they went on to win the St. Paul's Tournament which would be the covenant as, as an Ulster minor uh, title. So uh, that's that's where it has to start at. You have to start at the very bottom, the foundation, and 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 get the young lads through. Because if you if you don't have the proper structures at on the age level, and if you're not 
succeeding at on age level, uh, then it's going to be very hard to come, to come through. Yes, there's, there's, there's clubs that maybe I'm just looking at Owen Rose Corey in here and Derry. Uh, they they're they're a phenomenal club. What what they've done, you know, they won a senior championship a number of years ago, but they've always been knocking at the door. And you know, it's a, it's a real real credit to them because you know they, they had little success at on age level, and you know only for but a few families who drove the GA on down in that area and the success they had, it's it's incredible. We also have Enda Gormley, uh, the former All Ireland winner with yourself, Tony from 1993 from Derry, and the former uh, Glenn Waddy Graham's manager on the line. Enda, how are you? Good, good, thanks. And uh, you must be absolutely buzzed about tomorrow, one of the biggest days in your life in a different way. Are, are you going to be there as a fan? Am I going to be there? <laughs> I certainly intend to be there. Yeah, um, wild horses wouldn't drag me away. It's uh, as you say, it's one of the, one of the most exciting times in my life. So, um, how has it come to this? Because you were involved at underage level with Glenn and you must be really thrilled to see all the players that you were working with grow up and, and get to the stage now where they're battling it out with Kilmacud tomorrow for the big one. Hi, yeah, listen, as a Glenn man, it doesn't matter if you're involved, with, uh, you've been involved in coaching us or not. Like every Glenn man and woman and child is uh, excited and has been a great run for the last 15, 16 months since we won our first champ- uh, day championship. Um, so we've got sp- extra... Uh, Special when you know the lads very well. I've of course them for a lot of years from um, from the, the main group, the older group of lads from under fourteen for a year, and then four years minors and four years of seniors, and then some of the younger lads that had them at under twelves for a couple of years as well. In the middle of that, the four younger lads that wouldn't have been uh, wouldn't have been old enough to play in the, the four successful minor teams and three under twenty one teams that Tony talks about. So I I would know all the lads very well on a personal basis and. You know, get the stage, uh, get the stage starting to go to their weddings and stuff. Now, Emma Bradley gets married now in three weeks' time, so that's the stage that's grown up from from young lads at under fourteen to where we're at that stage with them now. And it was was there a no excuse policy that you had uh, with uh, lads uh, at underage teams? Was that something that you were you had? Yeah, we we had to change the culture. We 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 had a whole lot of things we had. We sat down at the start of this, and um, I. I uh, realize we had to be something we we're actually on a very very low web uh, we could be in an under 14C championship match way back in mid 2000s and uh, probably earlier than that actually and because we had to start much earlier some of the lads did a lot of good work at 8, 10 and 12s which I wasn't involved in at that stage I was still playing um, but when we sat down and we got them up to that competitive level of 14, 16 minors uh, we, we said right we're going to do this we're going to do it properly and we're going to change things and we looked at the, the reasons why we hadn't been successful in the past and a uh, whole lot of things but on pitch discipline off pitch discipline a lot of things that we had to hold our hands up that we didn't do right ourselves and stuff that we had been guilty of was a lot of the players uh, that, I, that I played with in my year we were all involved in that underage setup and we, we had a cold hard look at ourselves and a lot of truths were told and we decided right and I had to say to the lads listen your parents will tell you those boys are sweet trying to change discipline when they weren't great themselves and, and they were right but we, as we said we made the mistakes and, and as you say one of, the, one of the things when we got deeper and deeper into it was no excuses we always had a great team we always had a great reason why we could beat them blame somebody else and we probably one of the things we tried to change was look in the mirror, stop blaming everybody else. What can we control the controllables? What can we do differently? Never worry about if the referee had a bad day or if whatever whatever happened outside that we couldn't control. That what is can we control and how can we change and give ourselves the best opportunity? And are you seeing that now with Malachi Rourke's team? Oh, well, yeah, the lads have come up through that. So, like, Malgi has brought something different. I think when they come in, he wouldn't have had any attitude, any problems with uh, these boys. Have been uh, they've been exemplary in their behaviour and they've been exemplary in their their commitment. They're just they're really really dedicated and they're really ambitious. Uh, so he came into that, but Malgi has brought a brought a control and a, a calmness, and he, he's just he's just took things on to a different level completely himself and Ryan Porter. The boys would have made a crazy time for Ryan's. Uh, training and coaching as well. Uh, very, very, very top, very highly of both, both of them, and they've definitely moved things on to a greater level. Look, it's amazing the job he's done. He, what do you want to think a title with Loop? He's uh, got from Manitou an Ulster final. He's got a uh, Monaghan to a uh, an Ulster title as well uh, with um, as a Fermanagh man. So he's got st- st- some definite skills and ingredients that really put him up there as one of the top GA managers. And 
I was out there, like we knew uh, there was an inkling when we were going looking at somebody um, at the end of 2020 season we going to look for a new manager and we knew we had a good group of players. We, we, we knew deep down that God, and we have to, we have to give this one safe battle. I mean, whether it's a time, could we, sorry about that, could we get the best possible manager and we had a, we had a contact within the club. We had Margie up at a guest as a gala dinner and one of our members and uh, Bruno Mahal who had uh, two sons playing tomorrow uh, went to college with Margie and uh, she gave give their chairman uh, the number and there was a lot of work done behind the scenes it was kept very quiet and uh, a couple of us had an inkling that it might be a possibility but uh, when we got across the line we couldn't believe her luck because we knew we had got possibly uh, well I wouldn't even say possibly in my eyes without the best manager in Ulster if not Ireland Somebody's looking for tickets or a lift I think and, and for tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the things have been crazy for the last while tickets and still there's people who've been brilliant uh, still get tickets through from people there this morning pushing through but I think most people are sorted out now I think uh, I think at this stage but no there's, there's uh, the phone hasn't stopped and the, the good luck messages have come in from, from all over the world I had a couple from Australia text me yesterday that I shared a house with 30 years ago and I wouldn't have been that much contact and I suppose I've rattled that much on about the Waddies over the years that uh, people are remembering that it's my club and uh, uh, so still the great message and the, the good good wishes of people from all over it's been brilliant That's awesome uh, Enda Gormley Tony Scullion and Conneth Gilligan are with us on the Saturday panel we're going to take a break for the news uh, if you want to text us or uh, ask any questions to the lads 53106 on the club scene in general or anything about tomorrow's final Kilmuckle Crokes against Glenn we have Baddy Hale and Dunloy as well and we have Liverpool against Chelsea at the moment in the Premier League it is goalless after 64 minutes uh, and Mudrick is on for Chelsea so that's interesting to see will there be a breakthrough in that Premier League early game at Anfield we're back after the news and off the ball Saturday with the Saturday panel don't go away So we're with the Saturday panel at 2.35, by the way, we're uh, having an interview with uh, Baddy Hale Shamrocks player Michael Fenley, uh, the former Baddy Hale captain. Of course, he's retired now from the club and county game ahead of that hurling final in the club scene against Dunloy tomorrow. But right now we're speaking to three Derry natives, Enda Gormley, Conneth Gilligan and Tony Scullion ahead of the Glen Kilmogo Croaks match and the club scene in general on the Saturday panel. That's the football final half three tomorrow at Croke Park. In 1995, uh, Conneth... I was uh, in school near Kilmogood and they brought the All-Ireland Trophy into the school probably because they had the links with the uh, a club to winning team of that year, 1995. And it was just a great thing for a young lad to, to see the All-Ireland Trophy. And Kilmogood Croke's a, a massive success story, Conneth. Uh, a chance for them to make amends to losing that final last year so narrowly to Kilcoo in, in extra time. Um, who are the potential match winners for Kilmogood in your view, Conneth? Yeah, look, I think in terms of the way the game goes up, Midfield is going to be massive. Um, like Craig Dias has had a brilliant year, as is Ben Shovlin. But they're coming up against the midfield, which is county standard in every sense of the word. You know, Connor Glass has, has just, everything he's touched has turned to gold this year. And even in the semi final, where he wasn't as good as he normally is, and I think he was carrying sickness into it, Emmett Bradley was able to step up there and kick three points and, and, and possibly man in the match for me that day. So I think midfield is going to be where it's won. Both teams will see a weakness in the opposition's kickouts based on how the semi finals finished, even though they've been very strong up until this point. So there'll be big, heavy presses on both sides. And I think whichever team can get primary possession, that's going to go a long way to determining where the cup finishes at the end of the game. And Rory O'Carroll still going strong for Kilmacud. Yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant. Um, especially whenever the game against Kieran O'Rahilly had turned against them a wee bit, he came out and he was the extra man around midfield that broke the ball. And whenever they were on top, it was him that made the difference, getting in under balls, making the breaks. And like he's been exceptional. Bear in mind, he's done marking jobs all year and he's still scored 2 4. And there were goals and points at crucial stage of games as they weren't wherever the games were over. So I think Rory O'Carroll is making a mockery of his age and uh, and obviously he keeps himself in great shape. And I think between him and, and the likes of Aidan Jones, who didn't play last year, I thought Aidan Jones was exceptional the last day as, as one of the new players in along with Theo Clancy. So I think there's a lot of positives in terms of where Kilmacott are this year from last year. Uh, and the ex- sorry, go on. Sorry, go ahead. And I was just saying, the experience of losing is massive and sometimes they would they would obviously say that you have to lose one to win one and, and they'll be hoping that's true but Glenn will be going with no fear. Um, this is just a team that just look like they're playing completely um, on the crest of a wave. Uh, Connor Glass, Tony Scullion has been a real um, 
old style presence almost in the midfield, hasn't he? He's been the focus of the team. Absolutely, and you know, them few years in Australia were were, were brilliant for were brilliant for Connor. He come back an absolutely real man and and so athletic, covers the ground, real team player. You know, he, as I say, he's up and down. He he, he senses where the danger's at. He he, he finds back. Um, as I say, he just he's just he's just an all rounder, a very grounded person too, and 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 and. and Treats the next game as if it's his last game. So now he's he's absolutely great, absolutely. It's just just a pity. It's just a pity, and uh, you know, Glenn Glenn have done without him the whole year. Kieran McFall, he's it's just a pity. He's you know, Kieran has been, uh, you know, he's been a great player for both Glenn and Derry this last number of years. Possibly the best player in Derry <laughs> for a number of years there. And unfortunately, he's not about at the moment, but. Um, they've lived. They've been fitted play. Uh, they've been living without him, uh, and uh, there's no reason. You know, this lad's really stepped up the plate. Michael Warnock has been at the centre back there and has done a, a great, great job. But again, back to your man you've mentioned, Connor Glass. He's been absolutely brilliant, but he needs a good supporting role. And one thing about this playing team at the moment, they are all playing as a team and. They're they're not afraid of any occasion, and these lads have been used to one, and uh, they're not fear going to Crow Park tomorrow. And uh, can you see nerves at all being an issue? It seems from Connors and Tony that um, they're pretty confident that Glenn will be uh, keeping their heads in the ground. Are there any kind of techniques that can keep them grounded? Because I know, look, they've got experience winning Ulster titles, but this is another proposition. Yeah, well, uh, I often complain to this that. That pressure a 14 or 15, 16 year old lad is in town in a county minor final and his head is as big as anything he's ever going to have in his life and you know these lads have come through high lot of high pressure games at like there was a stage ourselves in Slack we were playing on underage games and the crowds at it were unbelievable they were bigger than some of the senior championship games at the time and the pressure for young lads to come through that pressure at that age I remember thinking at the time it wasn't fair and um, but I always said if they come through that they'll come through you know, so, and our lads think like that and they'll actually thrive on the big occasion yeah there has to be an element of nerves uh, I don't care how long you're playing football we all had an element of nerves but it's, that nerves can be a great thing uh, it depends who you channel that and uh, Malachy believe me is, is, is a great mind doctor and uh, he has, has them and the big thing I would have said about this team this year is that our two best performances have been in the two finals that played this year we had done as underdogs against Slachnil. Uh, the whole world in the county was that they had got themselves prepared better. Um, we were obviously without Kieran McCall, as Tony has mentioned there, and Slachnil had done a lot of work on the really like, thought they'd made a lot of mistakes. And we were won that game very comprehensively. It was without doubt our best game in day. Uh, we had a mixed run in the Ulster Club uh, but again we went into uh, as underdogs against Kilku and turned in an arm massive performance that day so so Big D doesn't worry these lads um, you know big games are all relative and you keep getting bigger and I, I wouldn't be too worried about that tomorrow any more than it will be that um, it has to be you can take the pros and the cons there has to be a wee bit of element of doubt in the back of Kilmer Club's head you know we lost one last year is there a wee bit of fear can be a motivating factor some people turn it into a positive other people can if we can put the pressure on can, it, can we turn that into a negative that's you know all the individuals are differently and everybody we're all wired differently and uh, we'll all react differently on the big day and what about Kilmer Club's strengths what do you see those as uh, Ender? They're a very good all round team. I suppose you don't get to this level of having any weaknesses. They um obviously they're very good at closing down filling the space in the middle of the back. Strong midfield and they have six scoring forwards. Uh that's the thing about them, maybe more so than maybe some of the teams that we'd have played up to this. Um you, any of them give them a the ball in that scoring zone. Uh they're all capable very capable of putting over bars, so they get a range. And then when you float to you and watch and obviously and that team that could beat last year like you know, it's uh, it's just a massive addition to him, and he he creates things apart from what he scores himself. So his running ability to drive out the opposition defences, and he creates opening for some of the rest of them. So um, they they have a very good all round scoring ability, and that would probably be uh, probably at a higher all round level than than we would anything else. That's, and probably anything else that's out there in Ireland at club level. Connell, I was kind of keeping an eye on Fossa against uh, Stewart and Harps last week and uh, great for the Cliffords and everything, but six red cards 
Um, does club football have a discipline problem in your view? No, I don't think it is any more a discipline problem than, than the county game. Right. Uh, I think anybody watching that game last week, and while it finished a wee bit unsavoury, I think in terms of the context of the game, it was a very good game and it was played in very good spirits. And I think, as David Clifford touched on himself, the emotion that's involved in it, and sometimes that can boil over. Like, bear in mind, these are Stewartstown players who haven't had a huge amount of success. You know, they were relegated from intermediate football. They won an Ulster club. They got to a final against the most talented junior team ever to play football and when you have the two Clifford so yes it boiled over but like I don't think outside of the elbow there was anything much more in it you know the, like Clifford's the two Cliffords got red cards um, as did Devlin but there wasn't much in it it was really only the elbow and apart from that it spilled over but I think there's just so much at stake there's so much work goes into this you know like that Stewartstown team have had to travel to Glasgow the week before Christmas to play in the uh Quarter final of that competition. There's just so much puts into it, and I think there's no more discipline a problem. Um, but I think probably players do have to step back and take a look of, of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and try and play within the limits. Yeah. Do you think there's a cultural issue in Gaelic football around um, the over physicality, as it were, of, of the game, and, and and that then spilling over into the elbow, the, these kind of things that we saw last week? Is it unedifying? Yeah, well, I, think... I suppose is my kind of my my question. Yeah, look, it absolutely is. And anybody watching it, you know, you can't justify elbows. You can't justify punches off the ball. You know, look, there's a high tackle or there's a there's an off-the-ball issue where it's involved in contact and where the ball's there. That's a different thing. But anything off the ball, no, it can't be justified. But what you have to understand is that players, whether it's a... That, like, bear in mind, last week's game was junior football. You know, the third division in every competition. So it's not Glenn, it's not Kill McGod. And yet you look at the condition and you look at the size of those players, the work they're putting in. Players are bigger, faster, stronger than they ever were. And when they make contact at full pace, like it is dangerous, you know, and, and they're the things that the referees are watching out for. But where there's no clear definition of what a tackle is, what a black card is, can be edgy as well. So it's, it's very, very difficult for referees, as it is for players, to know exactly where the parameters are. Tony, do you see any kind of cultural issue around um, the physicality of football and it being over the line? No, no. And you know this, uh, sometimes we get that. We we get the blame up here in the north or in Ulster for the over f- 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 physical part of the game. Uh, and that's absolutely crazy. No, no, going back to that game last week, yeah. There was there was another tackle, there was a head high tackle in that game. Uh, uh, and you no, know, yeah. it was a, it was a very 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 dangerous tackle also, and uh, uh, so and it wasn't you know it it, it was uh, it wasn't a Stewartstown player, um, uh, so uh, so what I'm saying is yes the, the, there was a couple of tackles in the game, but uh, you know the rest of the game and this crack of you know <laughs> we play the game you play it hard and fair and and you, you, you give it all. Yes, and sometimes it can be, it can overboil and, and it can happen anywhere in Ireland. And, you know, and when we are talking about uh, intermediate and junior club football, another thing the powers to be need to look at, you know, there's teams, there's clubs playing uh, in maybe senior leagues in their county or the, or in the intermediate league or whatever, but they're playing in the junior championship and, and senior, maybe a senior team playing in an intermediate championship. You know, you know, that should not be the case. You know, if you're playing in senior, you, you, you play, if you play in the senior league, then you play in the senior championship. So that's something that certainly has to be looked at because, as I say, Fossa last week, you know, uh, I think they play in a higher league. So should, should they play? Should they be even playing in the junior championship? I question that quite honestly. Yeah, and I'm just kind of, uh, I suppose, look, these things always get highlighted, don't they? And, um, with TV coverage and especially with smartphones and, and clips and everything now but um, it just seems like there was a Larry McCarthy was talking about referees and a culture and a shift that needs to happen the GA president of the association he's right about that I was thinking about Derry Tresk and Dermot Pierce is a, like over a decade ago is absolutely crazy stuff and maybe these things are highlighted with all the club games and so many of them go on around the country in your view is there a discipline problem in club football and Gaelic football? Not really. Listen, there's some things that we don't want in any sport, but I, I think, first of all, you're talking about highlighting Gaelic football. Uh, was it any worse than the things that was in the Holland game there before Christmas? 
um, where there was a, I don't know, a Leinster final, where the intermediate final, I think it was, where there was an awful lot of those crazy scenes, which is far worse than I saw in England football. Secondly, I think you want to compare it to our sports. The problem is that our sports are that high profile, and that, as, as Connell said, that's junior football. If you go down the levels of rugby and soccer, don't tell me there's some, not similar instances, there's some, not similar levels of discipline involved in those sports. But they're just the fact that there's not the same press coverage and they're not on TV. And unfortunately, in most sports, when you, when you go down the levels, you'll find that discipline mightn't be quite as good. That's not to say it's acceptable. It's not to say it's something we can improve on. Uh, and something we always have to try and aim. And certainly your point with the referees, we definitely need to be treating the referees at all levels. And we, we do read press reports that possibly not rugby, but certainly soccer and MJ, we definitely have to improve that and take it access. And when the more we do and the more respect we treat referees, the better referees we will get. And it'll be a, it will keep feeding and it'll, you know, it'll help, it'll help them, the quality of referee and will then help the discipline on the pitch. Um, but it's something we look at. But I, I don't think I don't like the fact that it's been highlighted as if we're football and particularly northern football has been way worse than anybody else. I think if you go through all the sports at a similar level, and if you were to really trawl trawl down through the, the uh, discipline levels in all sports that maybe aren't getting the same press coverage, you'll find that the discipline levels are uh, in uh, Gaelic football is at least as good, if not better. 87 minutes in the watch, Liverpool nil, Chelsea nil in the Premier League at Anfield. Um, just on Derry, look, we're speaking, I suppose, about what uh, the club um, success of Glenn is doing for the parish, the community there, Connacht Gilligan. Rory Gallagher, that Ulster title win and the ro- road to the All Ireland semi final, h- how has that uh, invigorated Derry football in the county, as it were, if at all? Yeah, look, I think it's been massive. I think a lot has been made of Derry games with those two and 300 people turning up because for a large part of the last decades we were operating in Division 3 and Division 4 so and, and that's normal but I think what Rory Gallagher has brought is a, a group of young players who have showed real pride in the jersey again yeah, and that has coincided with them getting up into Division 2 and having a run and obviously that breakthrough Ulster Championship is just massive and you started to see kids wearing Derry jerseys again and I think anybody that watched the all Ireland last year if the final whistle in Clonus when Derry beat Donegal wasn't one of the scenes of the year. I don't know what was, because the outpouring of emotion, five, six, seven thousand people on the f- pitch, it was just incredible. And I think getting to Croke Park, winning the game at Croke Park, and while the Galway game didn't go to plan, I think there was a lot of learnings, and I think Derry have kicked on from that again. And and I think what you're going to look at tonight in Derry and Tyrone is probably one of the most anticipated games in the Mechanic Cup there's been for a long time. And while Whoever gets the cup doesn't matter. I think the statement of intent from whichever team wins the night seven days into a league game is just going to be massive. Derry and Tyrone throws in at six o'clock at the Athletic Grounds in the Dr. McKenna Cup final. Um, I, when I was looking at Donegal, Connors, back in, say, 2011, they broke through in Ulster and they made they lost that, that match to Dublin, that terrible... Well, it was brilliant in one way and terrible in another way, eight, eight points to six. But then they progressed. They trained on under Rory Gallagher and Jim McGuinness, the manager, won the All-Ireland the next year. Is there almost like another cycle of a progression with this Derry inter-county team in your view? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously Derry done a huge body of work last year. They got themselves into incredible shape. Their physicality was the top drawer and I think they'll have probably have built on that. Again, this year there's looked at the likes of the young Lachlan Murray who came in and won an all Ireland minor. He has now played in the McKenna Cup and has looked really, really good. Owen McAvoy from Maharafelt has come in and he looks like another player that while he's very young could slot into that very quickly. Derry will be operating with a very similar team and a very similar panel in last year. And the big question is, can they unearth another forward that's going to chip in with scores to help Shane McGuigan? Because in Croke Park, whenever Galway were moving with Comer and Shane McGuigan wasn't at the pitch of the game just as he normally is, Derry didn't have anybody to pick up that slack. And I think that's the one thing that Derry need to find is another really prolific scorer that's a foil for Shane McGuigan. 30 years uh, this year, uh, Enda Gormley and Tony Scullion since Derry's only All-Ireland win, 1993. Uh, Enda, are you preparing for a lot of dinners this year, are you? Preparing for another dinner? A lot of dinners, a lot of uh, kind of uh, memory dinners. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm not so sure. Um, just trying to get out boys like Tony out for a night. It wouldn't be that easy anymore. He's slowing down badly. But um, no, we, we, we'll certainly try to meet up funny. We just... Uh, 
well, it was just a bit of a brief discussion before Christmas, but I don't think there's going to be, uh, I don't think there's going to be any official gigs, but we, it's something we're wary of. We've discussed uh, at length that we're not meeting up often enough because, as I uh, say, as none of us are getting any younger and it's, it's good just to get together. And not so much to reminisce, but to, just to meet up and, and enjoy the crack and probably it's actually to slag each other and have a bit of fun and remember, uh, just, uh, just to keep, just to keep the, the, the crack going uh, because there were some great days in you. It's like any team, you go through a lot of hard stuff and we had a lot of hardships and we had a lot of, a lot of bad days as well as the good days and we had a lot of hard nights and like, uh, sacrifices made. So it's, it's good to get together and, and have, have a good bit of a laugh because we, we had a great bond as a group of lads as, as most successful teams would be. And, um, so no, I, I don't think I'm too official, but I would be very hopeful now maybe in the not too distant future we'll get together and, uh, and uh, test each other's medal again to see who's good, very delicate as regarding a bit of a bit of slagging. Yeah, no shared uh, journey and great memories of of 1993. Do you know where your medal is? Uh, and uh, do you still have the medal? Uh, I give it to my mother. So um, <laughs> medals mean don't mean a lot to me. You know, medals or trophies or that sort of all stars that sort of thing uh, don't take away the memories. But um, all my Ulster medals and national leagues and figures and stuff I got there would be all in a big sweet jar uh, box. Uh, somewhere upstairs um, in my house but those you know, things don't mean an awful lot to me but uh, don't uh, don't for one second take away the memories or try to say anything bad about the about the achievements um, of one of them it's just the actual practical medals wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a big thing in my mind Tony it's uh, as I said a shared journey and a, an amazing achievement for the county back in 1993 and it's good to reconnect with uh, your old teammates and uh, see them because I'm sure there are years go by when you don't see them Absolutely, John. Absolutely. And uh, unfortunately, in the past year there, we, we got together, but unfortunately, it was in a sad, a sad occasion. We lost one of our, our players of that uh, team, Colin McGurk. And um, un- un- unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't meet up enough. And, and, and times we do meet up, it's, it can be, an, an, as I say, it can be a, a sad occasion. So, no, I'd say, and then the rest of us, we will. We will, and we don't. We we do not meet up enough, and we should. And hope hope we can meet up this year because uh, it was it was a very special time in Derry. Uh, it was history making. It was uh, the one and only that has come to the county um, in the history of Derry GA, and it was special to be part of it. And, and um, you know, you can't you can't beat. You just can't beat it. You know, uh, the, you know that nothing will replace. Those memories of 19 and 93, and we know we had a great, we had a great panel of players, and um, we we really we you know our club football back then it was tough, it was hard. We went out and we battled against each other, but one thing, whenever we got together as a county, we 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 battled together, and it it brought us great rewards. Do you ever watch the tape back, Tony? Do you of the final? <laughs> Do you know this? <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. Unfortunately, you know, as many as the time I say, I would sit down to watch it. And I, I, I don't. And it's maybe we I should be should be doing it more often. It's, uh, but I, I don't. And so maybe I've been lucky if I watched it once or twice since since the since the other in success. But uh, no, no, we'll get time to do it yet. Hopefully. Very good. Connors, how would you call tomorrow's game? Glenn and Kilmacud, you know both uh, clubs very well. Glenn from this year, uh, a bit painfully, and Kilmacud from last year. Yeah, look, and uh, it's very hard to call. Both teams very similar for me um, in terms of they're very good in their own kickout. They're very good trying to stop the opposition kickout. Kilmacud have more questions to answer for me than Glenn do. Glenn will play the same team. They'll have the same setup. Kilmacud put on a very high press, which works against most teams, and no teams can get out against them. Glenn have pace and power in five and seven and ten and twelve, where other teams mightn't have. So Kilmacud might have to change their strategy. They go man to man at the back a lot. So I just think that Glenn's style to try and stifle the likes of Shane Walsh is not about Warnock will pick them up in a man to man type basis, but it'll be about the players getting around to defend. I think that Glenn won't have any fear of Kilmacud. The big advantage they'll have is that they play the semi-final in Croke Park. A lot of teams go and play Kilmacud in Croke Park and have not played there before are we a bit overawed by it. Glenn in stages of the game last week did look like they weren't really used to the post and the kicking. 
they've got that out of their system now and I think Glenn probably by the minimum maybe a point Very good and uh, Enda Gormley what's the plan tomorrow a big Ulster fry on the road to Dublin early? Oh going on the road to Dublin now as soon as this call's over um uh, there's a big the town this last person out of the town tonight call, turns off the lights uh, it's massive a massive lot of uh, people heading down tonight and uh, they're all meeting up now I think if anybody wants uh, wants to go into the Crew Park Hotel tonight now you might you might get a, a drink brought to you and the uh, whole town now is, uh, has massive euphoria around the place and uh, people that I've never saw at football matches are running around with colours hanging their car and scarves and uh, it's great to see everybody bought into it and we have good there's great support now uh, behind the boys and uh, just massive euphoria so like what the few people that aren't going down tonight now are going down I think there's a couple of buses going down in the morning um, but an awful lot of people going down so I'll get on the road as early as possible I'm just going down there I'm sort of like a minder trying to look after the rest of the boys who travel to keep them in tow so that they're uh, they behave themselves tonight yeah, no, they need to be early as bed to some degree because uh, tomorrow's a huge day. You put a shiver down my spine, Andy Gormley. Look, the best luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Tony and Connors, thanks for coming on and uh, enjoy the game tomorrow. Glenn and Kilmacud. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Brilliant stuff. Andy Gormley, Tony Scullion, Connor Gilligan on the Saturday panel speaking about Glenn and Kilmacud in the club football final tomorrow.